and um, we thought lost forever. And because the first episode was destroyed, on the American shores, we never had a chance to see Invasion of the Dinosaurs until about 10 years ago when a fan came up with a film print of the first episode, which is in black and white, and we were able to get the other five episodes. It's a six-parter, Invasion of Dinosaurs. Uh, and we were able to see this for the first time. And it's actually never been seen in Pittsburgh wow. in its entirety. And this is one of the episodes that we will buy. If we have your commitment tonight, if we have your pledge of support, we will bring all six episodes of Invasion of the Dinosaurs right here to Pittsburgh, including the part one. Uh, but when you see that episode, because you haven't seen it complete in its entirety with part one in black and white, uh, as well as all the other five parts properly numbered and everything, you will see a very dashing, very handsome professor in a white kind of outfit, and he's controlling the dinosaurs. <laughs> and his name, <laughs> by the way, and his name, by the way, is Martin Jarvis. What was it like to work with John Pertwee? What oh, was that like? Well, John Pertwee again was a very famous uh, comic actor before he became Doctor Who, and he was also very famous as um, Wurzel Gummidge who was a, a kind of icon for children, uh, the Scarecrow character. So we all knew who um, he, he was anyway, and he was a very, very charming man. Um, and no discourtesy to John, and I know you didn't mean that when you were saying that Tom Baker really, when he took over, this was the ultimate Doctor Who in many people's eyes. Um, uh, is that right? Did Tom come? Uh, yeah, right after. Right? Yeah, right, right after. Um, John was excellent too. He was witty and eccentric, and he had a sort of talk like that. He had a very slight little lift, and he was very, very charming, very nice. He was very elegant. He was sort of like that. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed working with him, um, and I'm sure this episode must have been a great challenge to the young Steven Spielberg, because uh, there was obviously an opportunity to. To, to bring better dinosaurs to the screen, then I think you would agree, when, when we see these dinosaurs, when you see these dinosaurs, uh, if you haven't seen them before, I think you'll probably think, well, this is very interesting. They're very good when they stand completely still, but as soon as they start to move, you can say this for many actors too, by the way, um, when they start to move, uh, they are what we might call wooden. Yes. I don't know what they were made of, rubber possibly, but they didn't seem to have even the fluidity of rubber. <laughs> they, 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 well, they are very stolid dinosaurs. Nevertheless, they are. We were very frightened of them. Uh, and I think we were controlling. I think we brought them back. I, I think I, you, me and my boss yes, have been the sort of um, uh, what was Peter Miles? Peter Miles, yes. Yeah, who was he? Was very zany indeed. He's, very he's passed away, I think. Recently. Do you know? I'm, I don't yeah, know. He's passed away, but he was in several of those episodes too. Right. Well, he must have. That must have yeah. been a lot. Of it was fun. great fun. So we had great fun on on the set, but we still did it in the same way. We rehearsed for a week, and then we went to the studio. And uh, what they did there was more filming. So they went to certain. Um, quarries and um, sand pits and so on somewhere down in Devonshire and, uh, and shot. I seem to remember the, m the major going on, on locations and uh, somewhere way outside London. And so you did get some quite interesting uh, locations, which always sat very uneasily, because suddenly you seem to be watching a real movie, and then you'd cut back to the multi-camera tape in the studio where we were reacting to something on, on film, which was a little uneasy. And that was uh, in the beginning of what they uh, you call it something different in England. Uh, you, we call it chroma key. You call it color separation uh, overlay. CSO, yes. CSO. Color separation overlay. We would do lots of scenes against the blue background, and then it would kind of look quite interesting. And that was a very different technology. So where in the beginning with the Hartnell stuff, you were flying in with strings with, with strings just like you would be on a stage now suddenly you were uh, you were able to um, electronically have these kind of new effects and that was a big thing back then yeah some of the effects are all right but that, <laughs> nevertheless the dinosaurs i think still had left a lot to be desired okay why are you here in pittsburgh because we they, they, we just you happen to be in well, the neighborhood. I, I'd, like, I'd like to be able to say i, I came specifically uh, tj to help you with your drive and well, I didn't come to do it. I'm delighted to hear of, uh, of what's going on, and uh, you're still I do very, but you're that. still very much alive here. Well, I'm thrilled, uh, and uh, we just thought you were 30 years younger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was one. And so were you. You were the teenager. <laughs> that's right, you were the teenager that's right. watching. That's right. That's right. Um, I'm here with uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber and Alan uh, Apel, and where we're doing by Jeeves, and you hear the TARDIS in the background. Can you just hear that TARDIS now? <laughs> I wonder if it's going to land just over. The there it is, it's landing now. Or maybe it's just the elevator outside the studio. I'm here doing By Jeeves, this wonderful musical that we are doing at the O'Reilly Theatre in 
Pittsburgh. Uh, we've had this great sellout, and we have our final performance tomorrow afternoon, the final glorious matinee before we go to Toronto to film the show, and then we will go on to Broadway uh, in a few months' time. So that's really why I'm in Pittsburgh. Uh, now, I understand that this is absolutely standing room only. It's been a great triumph. It's a, uh, it's a wonderful show. And you're, you're going to Broadway. So, I mean, this yeah. is the, the final opportunity that you have right now as a Doctor Who fan, um, in addition to supporting us here at the station, is to be able to be part of the standing room only audience. But it's, it's one yeah, that's it's two o'clock. The, the thing is, it's, it's two o'clock uh, tomorrow. Um, tomorrow. Today, so, sort of, Sunday. later on. And, um, yeah, I mean, what happens is that there's often one or two no shows, or they can jam some more people in. So it's it's usually we manage to get everybody in. It's a wonderful feeling to uh, every night to do this great show. Oh, there you are. Where did you move from there? <laughs> this is sci-fi. Um, it's a wonderful feeling to to actually every night perform to a more than full house. I mean, it's, uh, all actors understand that. And we're having a great time in Pittsburgh. Uh, okay, so now, here's why we are here tonight. This has been great to be able to talk to you about uh, your role and then hear from your perspective what it was like to be involved in the making of, of these shows. We want to make sure that we keep these shows on the air because it's very different for us here than it is for those uh, of you who are familiar with the English system of television. And it's kind of hard for Americans maybe to get their fingers around sometime, but there's actually a tax for watching TV. It's not voluntary. We come to you and we say, if you love these shows, give us some money, we'll show you some more. And if we don't have the money, we can't show you these shows. It's different. You actually have detector vans where people go we around and, and say, you're bad. If we have a television and we haven't paid up for our license and the van catches us, catches us watching television or even catches us having a television. Um, yes, that's just like the detectives. You know, they, they come in and uh, you get fined and sent to court. So you, you actually have, like, television police. You have television t detector vans, detector. and there are advertisements on television warning you about them. Wow. Ooh. Wow. So how does it work? There's, a, there's actually a tax that you pay to... You buy a license every year. Uh, I have to say, I think for elderly people, I'm not sure what the age is, maybe it's over 65 or something like that, uh, I think they have free television and radio. Um, but, uh, no, you have to have a license. And I often ask myself, do you have a, have a license for one television? Let's say you've got a house and there's six televisions in the house, or maybe you, somebody has a house that's turned into six or eight or ten apartments. Does every room, does every person in that house have to pay? I don't know the answer to that. But you're hoping they don't knock down your door and say, you, you, you're doing the wrong thing. Yeah. Well, um, it's interesting because here we have all these programs and channels um, free of charge to you. When we do have cable here and satellite, but there's a charge for that service that goes to the cable provider and the satellite provider. But we, we actually don't receive money from that towards the programming. So that is why we are here right now asking for your dollars. The phones are available. We've got lots of great thank you gifts. When you call the operators, we'll tell you the uh, VHS home video. Lots of extra footage as well from what you're just seeing tonight. It's called More Than 30 Years in the TARDIS because it's a lot more than what we're showing you on TV tonight. That's available as a thank you. We have uh, the classic William Hartnell story, which is coming up right after 30 Years in the TARDIS tonight. Uh, the Web Planet, you will see that as well coming tonight. These are here because we had your support, we had your dollars, and right now we are asking for you to make sure that we can continue to make these episodes free of charge. There's no such thing as the PBS police that are coming and, hey, you didn't pledge, so we're going to take your TV away. Can you imagine such a thing? It's not going to happen here, but uh, the only way we can keep the programs happening here for you is with your dollars, it's with your support. So right now, just take a few seconds. We're getting ready to go into the final segment of uh, this kind of special overview, 30, uh, 30th anniversary celebration of Doctor Who, first time broadcast here in Pittsburgh, 30 years in the TARDIS, bringing it to you because of membership support. Won't you join us? Won't you become our latest member to make sure that we can keep these great episodes coming? We're going to talk more about the Colin Baker years with Martin. We're going to talk more about the great memories of Doctor Who. You help keep them alive. Call right now. If you prefer to mail in your contribution, send your check to WQED.